Hello, hello, hello. Hey guys. Uh, hi to everybody that's live with me. I'm super happy to be back today on day two of the uh, Digital Painting Pumpkin Challenge. Uh, today we're going to talk about coloring, but before I do so, if you are in the chat with me and I see a few of you guys, I'm going to say hi to Tula Smiled, uh, Park, Park Race, Vicky, Melanie, uh, Jersey. Uh, guys, let me know if you can hear me well. Uh, and see me well as well. Basically, let me know if all my gear and um, computers are working correctly. Because today I have a lot to cover and I want to make sure that everybody hears me well. So I don't have to repeat myself. We are going to talk about colors, more precisely about color, harmony. Um, through the years, I've been struggling a lot with color harmonies. And it was because I was thinking a certain way. Uh, and recently I started to think about... an just a little bit differently about it and I want to kind of pass that on because it really helped me to demystify the beast which is coloring as a whole. Uh, and I see a lot of you guys uh, joining me now uh, and thanks for letting me know that you can hear me well. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, sounds good and I see some regular faces. Hi Carl. Uh, thanks for joining guys. Uh, super happy to have you here. So today we're going to talk about color harmony. Uh, I'm going to go through this sheet right here and afterwards I'm going to show you a live example. But let's go through those four steps. So I have four steps to teach today. These four steps are kind of a simplifying version of my coloring process. So the first one is local color. Uh, harmony. So basically placing the local color. What is a local color? You can think about uh, the pumpkin being the local color is orange. Uh, the stamp on top, the local color is green. The background in this case, the local color is uh, purple, purplish blue. And basically a local color is just the color of the object. Uh, it's a flat color usually. Uh, so that's what it is. Then step two, uh, color the zone and shift any object, anything pretty much, uh, at a few exception, uh, few exceptions, but especially things that are organic, will usually have zones that are a little bit different colors. So there's shifts that happen. And if you look at uh, the pumpkin right here, uh, a little bit more closely, um, where am I? What am I? We have um, we have zones. Let me put the arrow. We have zones here that are like more pale, a little bit more orange. Uh, sometimes I put a little bit of green in it. Uh, basically, those zones are absolutely normal. So to have those is usually the step that comes right after that. Uh, I want to say good morning to Richard that just joined us and everybody else that joined us. Uh, third step is hue, light and shadow. Now, today I'm not going to talk about in depth about lighting theory. That goes tomorrow. Um, and because light and color are very interrelated, uh, there's some stuff I won't be able to teach today that I'll teach, teach tomorrow. And then for the rest of the week, I'll be going live with you guys and I'll be repeating everything that I've been uh, seeing in these three uh, lessons and I'll merge a lot more of the things. But for now, I'll be adding hue and light and shadow. What's important about that step is to understand how lights have a color associated to them uh, and how these colors uh, have effects on the colors of our local color and the color of our, of our objects. And the last step is what I call analogous colors. Now, analogous is a harmony by itself, like uh, complementary and triadics, uh, split complementary, there's a few of them. And analogous, basically what it says is colors that are adjacent on the color wheel. So if you look at the color wheel here, you can imagine that the orange, the yellow, orange, red, and pink, these are close together on the color wheel, they are adjacent. Therefore, if I were to use those, it would be considered an analogous color scheme. What I like about analogous is basically what it says is colors that are close by on the color wheel. And I'll explain all of that um, later. Sorry. Mm. I'll explain all of this later on with an example so it's very clear. Here. I can already kind of explain it a little bit. So my pumpkin here, what, what I have is a complementary color plus an accent. The accent is the green um, and the orange and purple are kind of in front, but not completely in front on the color wheel. 
Now, if I were to just, um, I'm going to take out these. Uh, so this is my color scheme. So we have the orange, the purple, and then we have the green. And what I just took out, these are the analogous colors that goes with it. So you can see that we have some yellow, some orange, some dark orange, some a little bit of a, of a reddish. And then for the background, we have some uh, a little bit more purple, a little bit more blue, a little bit more pale. All of these kind of different. Uh, even the green, I didn't put anything, but even the green has some, especially when we're looking at the last version, has different things. You can see there's even some, some orange reflection in there. All of these things make the colors just look that much better. So I want to show you these uh, these things um, in a clear example uh, today. Uh, so let me jump right here. I'm going to have the class today by asking you a few questions so it's a little bit more interactive. Can you tell me right off the bat, I have a complementary color scheme with an accent of green. Can you tell me what's wrong to your eyes right now? There's something with those colors that I need to fix. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you guys a few seconds if there's a delay with the live to answer that. But uh, I'm curious to know if you can see it. Uh, it's something that I need to fix on my local colors that will help me later to create a better harmony uh, by adjusting one of the settings of the colors. I'm trying to not give the answer while giving as much information as I, as I can. Can you tell me what do you see that I need to fix right now? Looking at the chat uh, with the delay. If you don't know, just take a guess. In a second, I'll tell you. Uh, green saturation, stream doctor, too much saturation, uh, says cupcake. The green is too bright, too saturated, vibrant. You guys are all absolutely right. Um, and it's exactly that. There's too much saturation and there's too much brightness on some of the colors. If I'm putting this to black and white, you can see that the stamp is almost like shining at this point. So this is a common mistake that I see a lot. And also it, it, was, it was the way that I was thinking about color harmony when I started to learn them, right? So I was thought that if you're going into the color wheel and we have the, the harmony here and you pick up you pick up that blue and you take the most saturated the most bright color and you take the orange these are kind of like the base of the color harmony they are facing each other on the color wheel directly in front of each other and uh, they are fully saturated and technically this is a complementary color scheme but these colors are way too saturated uh, everything is screaming at me. So we need to make decisions here. So the decision that you need to make is where do you want your focal point and how should you manage the contrast of your colors, value, um, colors, value, uh, I'm missing one, saturation, the, basically the three of them, the hue, the saturation, and the brightness, right? So how do you want them so that you attract the eyes of the viewer at the right place? Now, when you have one subject, like in this case, the, the viewer knows where to look at, but we can still help each other to make sure that we have the right balance here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think everybody been screaming at it, is I'm going to fix uh, the stem. I'm going to change that. I'm, I'm opening the hue and saturation that you can find, by the way, under, I believe it's image adjustment. Let me go pick it up so you guys see it. Image adjustment hue and saturation, or you can do the control U, command U, uh, shortcut. You pretty much have this one on any software these days. And I'm going to put down the saturation, which will kind of darken it a little bit. I might even darken it just a little bit and see what, how it does. I think that's looking better. I think the orange of the pumpkin also is just kind of like screaming at me too much. I'm going to kind of lower the um, saturation. I might play with the opacity uh, a little bit, or maybe not. I think that's actually pretty good. And uh, the blue at the back, now the blue at the back is kind of okay. I could see if, let's see if I play with the saturation a little bit, what it does, maybe the brightness a little bit. Okay, I think that's already a better. So that's step one. What I did right here is just to place the local color of each of them. I have my color harmony. It's a complementary color scheme. Uh, and we fix a little bit of color. 
The one thing I want to talk about before I go to the next step, which is color zones, uh, is talking about the color harmony itself. Now, it is true that a complementary color, which is one of the very most popular, I think, uh, color harmony out there with the analogous being also very popular, but the complementary color, color scheme talks about two colors in front of each other on the color wheel, which is 100% true. What you don't know when you start as a beginner is that they don't have to be exactly in front of each other to actually be close enough to be a complementary color scheme. Uh, so there is some wiggle room here. So let's try to play with that wiggle room. I think I'm going to try to put the background a little bit more towards the green. So if you look at the color wheel here, you know, I could go just a little bit towards the green or even towards the purple if I wanted to. Uh, matter, matter of fact, the example that I had here was towards the purple. Uh, that's why I'm going to do the opposite here. So we have the orange. I'm going to take the blue. I'm going to bring back my hue and saturation and I'm going to try to go towards the greens, see how it works. I'm going to play with uh, the saturation, the brightness, the darkness. I feel like maybe having something like, like this could be interesting. Maybe just a little bit more greenish. Yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, so that's one thing that uh, it's important to learn. A complementary uh, color scheme, they need to be in front of each other, but you still have some wiggle room um, and it's still going to work. It's still going to be pleasing, especially when you have a limited amount of colors like we have in this case. We're basically having orange and then another color. And usually if there's a limited amount of colors, you'll be good. If I were to do a giant scene, if I were to break all the scene with those two colors, it would still work. It's when you start adding a lot of different colors that are way too different on the color wheel that it becomes a little bit muddy. Um, and that's where the analogous color scheme is a very good trick, which I'll talk about later. So for now, we have done the first step, which is placing your local colors. Color zones, color shift. Like I was saying, any object out there will some, sometimes have different colors on. Even in the face of a human, fa a human face, you have the nose, it's a bit more red. The ears are a bit more red. Around the eyes, sometimes a little bit more bluish, darkish. You know, you have the zones. You have the same thing on a lot of objects. So for this, what I like to do is to create a uh, top layer. I usually like to use overlay because overlay can go pale and dark depending on the value of the color. I'm going to pick that color. I'm going to play with the, the color wheel here and I'm going to just do some tests. All right. Sometimes there's good tests that sometimes it's bad tests. I think that green adds a little bit of yellow and I kind of like that. I might try to see if a, a complete green, I think that's not bad either. So I think just a little bit of things. I'm going to make sure to lock it to my layer under it. I'm using the, uh, hold alt in between the two layers and it will lock the layer under it. So that's what I've been doing. So it's only on my orange. Uh, I might do the same thing with my stamp, uh, my stem. I'm going to use an overlay. I'm going to lock it on the green. Uh, and then I'm going to maybe uh, see if I can add uh, some, maybe some darker colors here. Sometimes you need just a few tests before you get what you really want, like in this case, but then I'll add it just a little bit of maybe this, maybe some reds. Yeah, maybe some reds actually. Just some, let me get a little bit dirty. All right, so I added just a little bit of different colors. I don't have to go uh, over the board with this. And I'm gonna add some colors to the background in a minute, but I'm gonna do that with, uh, Step three, which is hue, light, and shadows. And that's a huge part, and it's a part that you need to understand how light works. Now, I'm not gonna teach how to do lighting as in like cast shadows and form shadow and all of that today. That's gonna be tomorrow. Today, I wanna talk about just the light and color lights. Um, so what I need to do here is to add my shadows. Now, I already prepared myself and I created two shadows. Now these shadows are with blue because I had a blue background a second ago, but now I'm going to change that background and make sure that uh, it's the same color as my background, which is green. So I'm gonna put that to green and bring that back. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second I want it to be green. 
Okay, so that's my uh, my rough shadow. I'm going to obviously add some touches of here and that, and I'm going to add some some more light. But what I want to teach you here is this: when you have a light source, no matter if it's a white light source, white-ish, a white light source usually will have uh, some yellow in it to a certain extent. Now there's some neon; they're like more blue, and there's some other lights that are more yellow these colors will adjust the colors of your object, okay, basically. So a local color that we were talking about in the first step, that's the, the color before there's any light. It's untouched, right? It was orange. Now we're adding light to it. The yellow of the light is going to add a little bit of yellow in your color, so we need to think about that and add it. And the shadow has a color as well. You want to think about the shadow as being another light source, actually. You think about it, it's like the color of the light which is in the shadow of the key light, which is the main light source of an object. So in a scene like that, and all of this can get really complicated, what I'm going to give you here is really specific to this example, but still works uh, on, on bigger things. Here we have a lot of green in the background. And the green itself will create bounce light. Bounce light is when you have, I'm gonna do a few, uh, a few drawings so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Bounce light is when you have, you know, you have your, your key source, uh, my, my light source. So I have my light source here, okay? It's about, it's about like that, okay? That's my light source right here, okay? So there's a rays of light that shine on my pumpkin. And then you have the, the shadow, the form shadow, the cast shadow is created by it. And let's say that this one is a little bit of yellow, right? So what's going to happen here on my background, I'm going to create a new layer on my background, especially at the bottom. Uh, take my brush, big round brush. I'm going to have a little bit of that yellow. I'm going to put that to overlay again uh, and I'm going to paint some yellow. So you can see that that yellow light is going to create a little bit of a different color on that green. They are mixing together. Now, I'm not saying that scientifically, because you know there's, there's science and light, that this is the exact right color. What I'm doing as an artist is I'm taking some yellow, I'll put it on my, on my green, and I'm like, this is close enough. You don't have to be perfect, okay? So what I'm doing is exactly that. I'm adding a little bit of yellow to my green and I'll do also just to make sure that uh, just to make sure that the light scheme works and we'll talk about light scheme later I'm going to add a little bit of a darker background at the top here so there's a bit more of a, a, a light contrast here so now I've been adding a yellow on my green I'm gonna also add yellow on my pumpkin uh, I'm going to put that to overlay, put that in yellow, and I'm just going to paint a little bit of yellow here. I don't have to do too much. Uh, we'll be adding some more colors later on. So now we have the yellow of the key light. And my shadow is green because all around it is green, and therefore the bounce light, and that's where I wanted to make some, some, some drawing here so it's very clear to everybody. The bounce light from my key source, which is here, goes, you know, everywhere. You have lights everywhere. Uh, and when it hits the ground, it bounces back in the shadow and therefore creates, uh, it, it takes the color of the element that it's bounce, bouncing back from and it creates that green cast shadow. And so when you have a scene where you have a clear color on the background, most of the time, the color of your shadow will have the color of that background. Very cool trick to have. And you can really just keep that rule for pretty much anything. It would always look good. It's not about looking perfect as illustrator. We don't have to be exactly perfect like reality. But that rule is so close to reality that you can really just bank it. It's going to work all the time. Okay? So I'm going to do just uh, some profining here of my shadow. Uh, I'm using the, what am I using here? I'm going to use, uh, no, that's not what I want. I want to use my eraser. And I'm just going to, am I at the right place? Am I erasing? What is this? 
eraser. Uh, why it's not working? Is it eraser? Give me a second, guys. Why it's not erasing? Huh. Strange. Oh, I'm on multiply. No, that's not the reason. Um, huh. That is strange. Let me put it to normal. It's changing the color, and that's weird. It's putting my color at the back. Maybe I just discovered discover something new. Let me see. I'll just do that then. I'll just apply this and I'll just do it with a mask. All right, so I'm going to just kind of smooth that transition here a little bit because this is a form shadow and form shadow, I'll talk about that tomorrow, but form shadow usually have a softer edge. And I'm also going to put just a little bit less opacity. It doesn't have to be that dark. I'm gonna put just a little bit less dark. Um, and, and thanks for everybody helping me here. I see your suggestion. Uh, for now, I found a fix, but I, it was kind of weird. I'm not sure what, what happened there. Um, and I want to say hi to Linda. Um, let me also uh, have a shadow here at the top. So that's going to be a little bit softer. All right, so now I have my shadow. Um, one more thing that I need to add for that step, and sorry to take so much time, uh, is a little bit more bounce light. So the entire shadow is going to be green because my background is green, but also where the zone is closer to uh, my pumpkin from the, the ground, you know, so you have the ground here that it's pale green. Let me zoom in. You have a, a, a green that's pale here. It's going to bounce back on my pumpkin. So I can just take a new layer here. I'm going to put it to multi uh, overlay again. Take that and I'm just gonna see like here if that's working. Sometimes the overlay doesn't work and I might have to change it, but uh, maybe that's actually pretty good. And yeah, so that's going to kind of bounce back. Now, it's, boun it's bouncing back and it's mixing that color a little bit. I only want that color on my pumpkin though. So I'm just going to make a, whoops, a make a mask of my pumpkin and I'm also going to probably delete what's... Okay, there's something happening with my eraser, which I'm not able to erase for some reason. Let me just do a test here. Okay, no, that's... Okay. Okay, now I'm able to erase. So, am I able to erase this. All right, there you go. Um, I'm going to erase what's here because in this angle, that bounce light is not going to touch that. Again, we'll talk about lighting tomorrow. For now, just uh, take for granted that I need to delete this part here because it's not going to be affected by that bounce light just yet. So bear with me. Bang, bang, bang. All right, so what did we do? We did uh, step three, hue and lights. And what basically we did is we added the right color in the shadow, which is super important. There is no shadow that it's black in life. So we took the green because we have the background. We added some pale green at the base because the bounce light is closer to there. And we add some yellow at the top. This is already so close to a final. Obviously, if we're looking at the last step here, there is a huge difference between the two. But really all I have in the last step, which I'm going to show you in a second, is a little bit more texture, a highlight, and I remove the lines. And obviously a little bit of sweet, sweet love, which requires just a little bit more time. So I'm gonna to try to do that uh, in step to see you. So the first thing I'm going to do for the last step, which is analogous colors, is I'm adding, I'm adding those different hues, different colors that are mixed. So right now, if I'm going back to my harmony here, you know we have that uh, 
well, now we moved, moved it a little bit. Now we have that green instead of that blue. But all that to say that we have just a few colors. We want to add all these different colors that I was talking about here, right? All the different hues that are adjacent on the color wheel, which are called analogous, right? Uh, so let's do that. Uh, first thing first is uh, I'm going to create a new layer here. And uh, usually I think I like to add the highlights. Now my light is a little bit yellow, so my highlight could be a little bit yellow as well. So I'm going to try to see like if that's good enough. The way I like to do them usually, uh, it's quick and dirty. I'm just going to add with a hard brush, just a little bit of this like that. And then I take a soft round brush as an eraser and I kind of just come and delete some parts here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And just that gradient is going to give just a little bit of a reflection here. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so we have that highlight here. Uh, I can now pick up that, um, that shadow and also add shadow where there's places that are like a little bit more bumpy. This is a little bit of light theory, which again, I'm not covering today, uh, but just bear with me, adding just uh, a little bit of bounce. Uh, these places here, I'm gonna pick up that, that color and I'm gonna start adding uh, some analogous color scheme. Now, like I was saying at the beginning, the lighting theory and color theory are so interrelated that it's hard for me to teach one without teaching the other. But what I'm doing here is I'm thinking about basically planes of the pumpkin that are reflecting the light in a certain way. And then I shift the value and I shift the brightness and I shift um, the hue, brightness, hue, saturation, uh, uh, a little bit just on the color wheel. So you see I'm picking this orange. Orange, I'm going to take a, a little bit of red here. I might change it a little bit. And it's just, just to say that it's a little bit different. And uh, I'm gonna create a new layer here. And I might just kind of add a little bit of that color here. And sometimes the smallest difference makes the biggest difference, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna take my time here, pick up that green maybe, and again, I might uh, shift it maybe towards the yellow a little bit more, towards the gray, see how that looks. Maybe there's like some more reflection here closer to the ground and where the teeth are, that's going to add some variation. I might just take the middle here and add it more on the red side. Uh, maybe even darker, let's see. Something like that maybe. Sometimes you mix it, you pick up that color and you move it. Uh, and it's important to also like, I'm having a, 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 smaller, uh, a smaller illustration that I'm looking at on my audio screen, but you could do it on this screen, especially if you're using Photoshop. You can go window, arrange, and uh, there's new window. This is going to create a duplicate of the window that I'm working on. This is literally the same window. So if I'm painting here, it appears there as well. Uh, and if you put that into like smaller, you'll be able to always keep your eyes on it. So I just wanted to show that trick. I'm going to close that window because I have it on my other screen. But if you don't have two screens, you can definitely do this and keep an eye on a smaller version. It's going to help you as you're adding details. Because really, I'm at the point here that it's like I'm doing corrections and I'm taking my time. I'm taking colors that are already there. I'm mixing them a little bit with, uh, with what I have already on screen. There's a bit of rendering of the form, which again, we'll learn a little bit more tomorrow because that's really just purely about uh, lighting theory and how to add lighting from imagination. Um, but at the same time, what I'm doing is I'm picking hues, like I was saying, and I'm trying to kind of add a little bit of color uh, color changes in it. Like for example, the, the, the leaf here, I'm gonna take the place that it's facing the light and I might go towards more the yellows. I'm gonna shift it to yellow, maybe a little bit more pale. And I might just add a little bit of that yellow here. I might even add a little bit of that yellow here as the light is touching it kind of thing. You know, it arrives there. I can take that shadow here and maybe add a little bit of shadow and just adding these colors slowly. Looking it in small also helps me to just continue doing the right things. 
uh, I might go at the bottom here, take that green maybe, and kind of see if, if I'm able to just add a little bit more of that green reflection here. And now you start to have these analogous color scheme that I was talking about that are adjacent on the color wheel. I might take the, the light, the light uh, here of the yellow, and I might add it just here a little bit, which will bring back these eyes to be a little bit more clear to see. And that's adding visual interest and different hues, which is great. Uh, maybe I added just a little bit too much here, but maybe I can just delete a little bit here. So that's pretty good. And there is a work of like trial and error here where you like, you're adding a little bit more. I might go a little bit you know, darker in between. And it's really the place where at this point I'm taking my time um, adding some colors, looking at what's happening, and I'm starting to mix it all. Uh, so I'm hoping that that was useful. I'm going to continue painting on this, and I'll take some questions. I would like to try to also show you how I'm going to remove the lines, change the color of the lines. All of this will help. But if you have questions while I do this, put a capital Q in front of it uh, so it helps me to read faster the comments. But I'll, I'll keep my eye on the chat, which is on my screen right here. Um... Uh, Vetim says, I feel like the outside edge of his high should catch some light coming from above. Uh, yeah, I, I'm adding, I'm going to remove the light and then I'll be able to puff in the, the lighting. Uh, and the rains of the plane should have a cast shadow. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that need to be added here, but uh, bear with me here. I'll, I'll just kind of take more of my time here. I want to change the light, uh, the, the color of the, the lines here. So I'm going to, usually because it's a red pumpkin, I'm going to go towards the red and maybe the deeper red. Uh, and I'm going to, the very right the top, I think the top could be deep, deeper reds. So I might just paint and I'm going to change the deeper reds. I don't want to change all of them because there's some light lines that will be better um, if they are the same color. Come here, I'm taking the kind of the color of the pumpkin, actually. Maybe not that part here. Uh, and I'm just gonna get back that red. Some places it's red. Here, for example, I think having a darker green would help me more. Uh, some places I'm gonna keep black because I want them to stay punchy. Here for the shadow, I might just go a little bit like more pale, but still a little bit darker than what it is here. And just this and that, uh, changing those lines. Uh, and here, I definitely will want to remove those, whoopsie, remove those lines because I'm going to change the planes in a second. And uh, obviously I'm not gonna go into lighting right now. I'm not gonna teach, I'm gonna teach a little bit more about it tomorrow. And I'll do it in black and white because adding lighting and color at the same time is actually a lot more difficult than just uh, grayscale. So for people to try it, I think it's gonna be better like this. Uh, but basically what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna paint on top of my lines now that I made them just a little bit less um, less obvious and I'm going to start kind of finding some edges at some places uh, like the edge of my eye here maybe have that a little bit more pale uh, and I'm not trying to be perfect but just to have a few changes in value whoopsie a few changes in value and adding just a little bit more of a smooth transition between the edges, which will help a lot to add a realism. But I like to keep a little bit also the, of the lines. So it's kind of a mix, a mix of it all. 
uh, here, I'm going to add some analogous color scheme because really what I'm trying to do today is to show colors. Uh, and um, some of the planes will catch more light. I'm going to use a soft round brush for this, and I might just kind of add just a little bit of you know, changes in colors where certain of edges are. Just a little bit. It's going to help to visualize those edges a little bit more. It's not 100% correct in terms of lighting, but sometimes what you need is more contrast than accuracy. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, I might just add a little bit more here. And then I'll be able to just come back with my brush and see if I can just maybe add some, some of the edges will face the light a little bit more and so on and so forth. Uh, let see, there's a question. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, Morad says, did I miss a question before that? No. Morad says, uh, you talk about how to color surfaces, uh, talk about color subsurface scattering, like how the light inside illuminates uh, the flesh of the pumpkin. I actually made a video about this if you want to check on the, um, on the YouTube channel of Paintable. Um, but subsurface scattering, in a nutshell, just enters an object and make this object kind of luminescent, right? Uh, every object will have a different way to bounce that light. There's a lot of trial and error when you play with, uh, with, with light, and especially with subsurface scattering. Um, if you want a clear example, like I was saying, there's a video of my 2019 pumpkin where I add a candle in it and it's on the paintable website uh, paintable YouTube uh, channel uh, so you can go check it out uh, not that it should help you a lot more I won't do it in this example it would take me too much time um, Jersey tattoo says will this be available for later play yes uh, the replays will be uh, live guys uh, right after I finish here and I'm not gonna push it like to completion here uh, my goal for today was really just to to kind of just give you guys enough about color harmony. Tomorrow, I'll talk about lighting a little bit more, uh, how to understand edges, where the light is supposed to bounce. Uh, we'll talk about all the different components of the light, such as form shadow, cast shadow, uh, these kind of things. Oh, here's the thing that I forgot that I wanted to show that comes in today's class. So we already made the shadow with some greens, but we can also add even more green to it. And even though it's not going to be theoretically like correct in terms of how reality would be, I can take that green that I really like here and I can probably try to keep it in bounds here. No, not this one, this one. Try to keep it in bounds, create a new layer, and I can probably just kind of add some green here just that, that kind of bounce here, and I think it adds just some cool effects. Uh, maybe that's too much, but just, just a little bit here. Just a little bit of that green here. Uh, and it mixes together, and then create a new layer. Uh, and then what you want to do is kind of, and that's, that's where lighting theory comes, but I'm, I'm trying to make sure that the places where it's supposed to be darker and the crevasses to kind of understand that. All right, so that's a 3D object kind of thing. Um, and just having fun with showing these uh, these planes, basically. Let's see, there's another question. Um, Cupcake. Cupcake says, let me bring the chat closer here. Cupcake says, uh, when you push the saturation of color in your art during the sketching planning phase or no wait when do you push the, the saturation of color and the phase planning phase or during the coloring phase as you go um when you push the saturation of colors in your art uh i'm not sure i understand the, the question correctly but when i do paint uh in colors uh i i usually add saturation based on the light scheme uh 
in theory, uh, it's not always the case, and you can definitely play with those uh, with those effects. But in theory, shadows will most of the time be more saturated than the lit place. It's not always the case, like it's not the case on this illustration right now, but there's certain things like, like these rules that if you're looking at pictures in, uh, in a plain day, for example, the sun usually will kind of over, will add over, will have higher values on the colors and usually those colors will be more desaturated than the shadows. So you can play with those rules that you see a little bit and sometimes without having to be perfectly like perfect, perfectly perfect makes no sense, but <laughs> perfect uh, on, on your colors is playing with those rules uh, sometimes will just give the illusion of reality and sometimes that's already what you need to do. So one rule that I like to do, uh, and I'm not following it here, I, I realize that, but is to usually put more saturation in my shadow and it helps um, it helps to balance things because you don't want everything to be saturated. You want places that are desaturated, you want places that are saturated. Uh, so being able to kind of have that kind of rule helps a lot. Um, Venim says, is there a point where you merge everything and just paint over your uh, always keeping uh, your... Yes, uh, I usually it's about right now. Uh, right now I'm not doing it because I don't need to, but um, at some point what I like to do with my illustrations is use tools like... Uh, I'm going to add a new layer on top of it. Tools like a, um, a, smudge, a smudge brush. Uh, and a smudge brush will kind of create... Uh, We'll just kind of take all the colors together, which creates a layer that looks like this, right? Uh, and so it's a layer that you need at some point to merge all your layers to actually use it. Uh, so that's the reason why I usually do it. I can actually keep that there. It's actually working. I can even push my lighting here. Uh, so yes, to answer the question uh, in one go, I do this, uh, but... Uh, it depends. It depends on what what illustration I'm doing uh, to know when I'm doing it. Like in this case, I could continue with a lot of layers, uh, and I wouldn't have, I think, as much problems uh, with this one. Uh, let me see if there's more questions. Uh, Linda says, "How much is this?" Uh, I'm not sure you're talking about what. Um, uh, is there any way I can learn painting better? The lighting uh, confused me a lot. Uh, well, certainly, uh, if you guys see on 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 this uh, on this video, uh, there's the spooky twenty that we're having all week long. Uh, this is just to uh, say thank you to everybody that's participating in the in the challenge. Uh, we are giving a twenty percent on the Digital Paint Academy. The Digital Paint Academy is where I have all my classes. Uh, so this is like kind of just like a snippet that I'm doing right now. But in the Digital Paint Academy, I have a huge module about coloring, a huge module about lighting. Uh, I teach you how to do lighting from imagination. I do you uh, how to push uh, color theory, sketching and all of this. I created a step-by-step. -step. There is a link in the description. If you want to go click on it, uh, you'll see that the registration page explain everything in detail. Uh, so yeah, you have uh, that opportunity to get a 20% off this week. Uh, which is that that never happens for everybody that's following me. It's pretty rare. Uh, Murasam says uh, he is going <clears> to <throat> do a lighting video to next. Yeah, so tomorrow I'm doing a live about uh, about lighting. Uh, Lucard says, do you have any tips uh, to doing contour? Sometimes it feels like my contour are not clean enough. I did show um, yesterday about sketching. Were you there? If you were not there, go check it out, but also go check on YouTube if you want, or, or join the DPA. The DPA, like I was saying, the Digital Pain Academy has all my classes and a clear step-by-step. -step. It's pretty much the way to go. <clears throat> but the live that I did yesterday will show you my sketching technique, and uh, I have already videos on the YouTube channels that shows how to make smooth lines to help you. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice <laughs> slowly. Mm. Let me see if there's <clears throat> more questions. Okay, Vla uh, Vadim says, <clears throat> making a duplicate window and making it smaller is really helpful. I would advise to also set windows in black and white mode so you can check values while coloring. That is absolutely true. I can actually show that to everybody, actually. It's a good trick. So I'm already having it on a, uh, 
on a shortcut here. But if you are in Photoshop, um, there is a cool way where you can go to, let me put that away. Uh, you can go to, where is it again? Filters? No. Uh, view. It's in view. You want to go view and then uh, proof setup. You want to hit custom. And then you want to change that to dot grain 20 where it says device simulate. And what it does is it transform your screen into black and white. But you're actually picking up colors. You can see I'm picking up colors, which means that I can actually paint with colors still on my computer, on my painting, but keep things in black and white. And that's super useful when you actually paint uh, lighting from imagination and you can check your values. Like my values here right now, they're probably missing a little bit of contrast. Uh, I could probably modify a few things. I won't now, uh, but it's a great way to catch up. And so then you can go back to your colors and you can see what I added here was not in grayscale, it was in, in color. Uh, so that's definitely a great trick. Uh, thanks for reminding me <clears throat> that him. Um, I'm looking at that. Thank you for everybody. I thought that the video was insightful. I'm looking forward to do the uh, next one tomorrow. It's going to be great. Uh, Murasam says, uh, could you have multiple small windows up to see color and black and white? Um, no, not of the same. Not, not that I know on Photoshop you, because it's the same window. Uh, and that's the beauty of it. All the things that you do on one appear on the other one. All right, um, I could definitely push this uh, a lot more, but I don't want to make this live too long. And it's already been 48 minutes. So let me actually go back on uh, this cheat sheet right here. Uh, so you guys can download this if you haven't yet, right? You'll have this one, you'll have the one for sketching. It's all free. There's a link in the description uh, where I showed the four steps. Uh, the set that I showed you today was local color, color zones and color shift, hue and shadow. So important to understand the color of your, of your shadow, color of your light source, and then analogous color. It's how to add those little touches. Uh, that's what I was doing slowly, but I would need a little bit more time where you had all these different kind of hues. And it's in the process of rendering illustration that you actually do this, which to do it at a better level, you need to understand lighting, which I'll touch tomorrow. So for now, uh, I'll, I'll be closing at this uh, this live soon. I'm going to take that last question that just come from Cupcake. He says, sorry for the uh, confusion. I was asking, when do you plan areas in your illustration where you will push colors and saturation? Usually, you, you plan that with the lighting. Those two things are so interrelated. Uh, you know, if you put a spotlight on something, having saturation there will act as a focal point. Uh, so saturation, uh, brightness, all of these can, can really help you. All of this has to do with contrast, contrast and saturation, contrast and value, uh, how to guide the eye. So it goes, your question cannot be answered in one thing, basically, because it goes into like, the broader concept of how to do the principle of design and how to do composition and how to play with contrast of light, value, colors, you know, composition as a whole, all of these things go together and lighting being part of that. So when you think about what do you want saturated and where you want to put your saturation, thinking about where you want the eyes of the viewer to be is actually the question you need to ask yourself because that's ultimately where you want to have your contrast and your saturation. If you have something that's very saturated on your painting, it will add, uh, you know, a focal point there. And sometimes that's not, that's not what you want. So you want to be aware of those things. Uh, so if you want to place that, place them correctly. Carl says uh, you could have multiple reference windows in our age. Are you answering uh, the other question? Cool. Everybody says thank you. Thank you so much. Perina says, you mostly use overlay. I use multiply a lot also, but overlay is one of my favorite, definitely. All right, you guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a awesome day. Looking forward to see more of your paintings. Be sure to post them. Don't forget to use the paintable uh, hashtag paintable pumpkin and to tag paintable at that CC on Instagram uh, to get more chances to win the prices. We have awesome Huyon tablets. All of this is on the registration page of the event. If you don't know the event, what it is, if you cut that video and you don't know what it is, all of it is in the description below. So go check it out. I'm looking forward to talk to you tomorrow, guys. Have a good day. Uh, happy painting. And I'll talk to you soon.